Hi everyone, it's Abby again. Um, I was so happy to listen to all of your discussions last week. That was amazing. Um, like at first I was really leery about doing videos, um, but I actually kind of like it. I feel like I know my classmates better than I did before, so I'm happy about that. Okay, this is about my 10th time taping this because, um, you know, one of the things I'm going to talk about later is personal commitments and how that can get in the way of writing and that I, that happened here concerning some birds and some kids chasing each other around the house like Looney Tunes. So, okay, so we'll get to that. Um, as a writer, what brought you to this program? Okay, what brought me to this program? I started almost exactly a year ago. I started writing a novel and I loved it. It was amazing. It almost became like like a meditation thing for me. Um, went to my Zen place to um, write, and it was just, I got a lot out of it. It was almost, it, it was therapeutic in a lot of ways. It was wonderful, and I wanted to keep doing that. However, I kind of wrote myself into a wall with it, and I needed, I need help. I need help with it. Um, I'm about 120 pages in, and I realized there's no place for me to go. There's no place from where I've written to get to my conclusion and what I want to see have happen. What I realized at that point, less about the book, but more about my writing skills, I need help with my writing skills. I need help getting from point A to point B. All my birds are here right now, three of them, just here watching me do this. It's so funny. They're literally just here watching me. Okay. Um, I need help getting from point A to point B um, with my writing. And so I was looking originally for an MFA program, but there was none out there that was completely online. It, But it wasn't possible for me to even do like a low level of um, on-campus work. Um, it just isn't possible with my schedule, raising my children, raising my family, um, you know, all of the other commitments they have within the community and such. So um, that didn't work out. So that didn't work out for me. Um, but I found the SNHU's master's degree in creative writing in English, and I jumped on that, and it was a wonderful experience, and everything with SNHU, and my classmates, and my teachers, it's all been just wonderful. And, um, so when the MFA program came about, I, the all online MFA program, I was so excited because this was finally my chance to do what I wanted to do. And um, I applied for it, I think, within a few days, actually. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy. So what do I hope to get out of the program? Um, help. What do I hope? I hope to get help. Um, I just, I need to learn the process. Um, I went to school for art, visual art, so it's the same creative feeling, but different processes and how we work through it. And so I needed to, um, I need to get through that, get, uh, you know, learn from people that are professionals, um, learn from my classmates. Um, I need really good workshopping uh, for my work to make myself better. And that's what I'm looking for. And I realized I could have gotten all of that free, you know, in other avenues, but that's not how I work. Um, I have always enjoyed school. Uh, I would love to be a professional student, to be honest. One of my dreams is to become a professor or even at just a community college level. I would absolutely, that would be a dream come true for me. And so I'm hoping with the MFA, it will push me further in that direction than the MA would have. Um, my pri With writing as my primary focus, I don't know how I need to figure that out. I don't know how writing can be become my primary focus when I'm homeschooling my kids. Um, so I need a balance, and I need to figure out that balance. And um, yeah, I have a lot of um, commitments outside of the home as well. I teach classes several times a week um, to homeschoolers and different homeschooling groups. And I um, work with a lot of children's theater, We're putting on two plays this semester that I'm working on. And it's a lot. It's all it's a lot. And I need to be able to bring it all together and include writing. So the writing doesn't necessarily get done every day and it needs to get done every day. Um, so I need to work on that. I need to work on scheduling and balance that time. And any moms who have figured it out, 
I, I certainly have haven't but if you have please post below just to what your secret is um so yeah so I'm usually up to like two o'clock at night sometimes three writing and doing coursework because that's the only time I have because I feel like I'm constantly out and about constantly working with my kids there is no break um now I do have to I don't I also have lupus, which is also a concern because I tend to run out of energy quickly um, with health problems or if I'm in a lot of pain. I need, um, what do I do, you know, to keep writing? Because I do, I'm the type of person that I do need to keep going or if I don't keep going, I'll just stop altogether. And I don't want to stop altogether. Um, I want to keep going. So any advice um, in dealing with illness, dealing with family, I just don't necessarily understand that I need my time to write like they don't see it as office hours even though I call it office hours they don't see it as office hours that okay mom like they're old enough to they are self-sufficient but we're very close-knit which thank god we're very close-knit um <clears throat> but that also means they they are always coming to me um about one thing or another and the office space thing like this is my office hours does not work with them or this is my writing time that does not work also workshopping is something else that will help me professionally because I think like especially in graphic design um you know we have critiques and they are you know professional graphic designers get used to critiques they're a good thing um they help push you to become better um you know, sometimes these writings and graphic design, these, these the things you create are like your baby, but you have to remove yourself a little bit from it to grow because if you latch onto it like, your ba like it's your baby, you're going to kind of not grow and see what's wrong and make it better. Whereas if you can detach yourself from that, then it helps you to step back and make changes that you need to make, which is what I think workshopping and critique does. And so I'm really thankful to have the opportunity to go through the workshopping process in all of my classes here. Classmates goals and concerns. Um, I definitely, I feel like a lot of you talked about familial commitments and that's exactly where I am trying to balance it all. Um, so I think we're in this together and if one of us finds something that works, maybe just let us all know because we need to know. Um, otherwise, I think, was it John um, said about writing screenplays? I don't want to write screenplays, but I would love to write theatrical plays. Um, I would love that. I, I have two plays going this semester right now that it's very, I'd, I'd love it. I would love to be able to write a play or even teach a playwriting class to high schoolers. Um, so of course that does, that doesn't fall within the scope of this program, but I just want to let you know, John, yeah, I'm into script writing too. So, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I can't wait to hear what you all have to say. Thanks. Bye.